Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow 333 with another cast, another test of the Acron EXP mod. And we have here Nail and Vermind. We're going to be going at it on Hills. Hills is a map we've seen many times on various casts. It is a fairly small map, 256 units by 192 units. It's a very high resource map. It's got expansions, got, or got expansions everywhere on the map. All of which have as many resources as the main. The main has 5 LC, 2 QP. Expansions have well, one nearest the main has 4 LC, 4, 3 QP, and then there's another one below, 4 LC, 2 QP. So it's got a lot of a lot of expansions around the map, and it's also got expansions in the middle, expansions at the top and bottom. It's very resource heavy, especially for its size. So now Nail and Vermind are going at it. Nail is currently choosing his race. He is playing Grekim, while Vermind has decided to go for Vekir. So Vekir versus Grekim. One of the things this mod was more focused on was the Caesar versus Grekim matchup, and we aren't totally sure if it's balanced yet for Vekir. I mean, it's not a huge deal since it's just a it's an experimental mod just to see, just to play around certain ideas and see how the game works with various ideas of possible balance, I, balance fixes or balance patch ideas. Uh, we'll see how it pans out. I mean, it's like I said, it's purely experimental community mod. The next. Official patch is supposed to be out next Tuesday at the latest. I last heard it from the devs at least. So that would be kind of cool. But until then, we can just play around a bit with the game and the engine and just see, at the very least, see what it can do and get an idea of what the devs could do or what could have done or what we can do if we wanted to make a game of our own using Resequence, for example. Anyway, Vermind is. So it's not Vermind's now. Vermind's going for standard economic start, 6LC, and he's sending his Zyme Veer down to the main base and sending his Shinveer and Teth Veer along to the third, the corner expansion, which Nail has lifted up his Sepi and Faro to go expand towards. So they should be meeting up about the time that Sepi and Faro start to sit down and progen some Octos. Now, of course, the main base Nail has set up most of his, his RPs as well. He does have a small mistake, but he's correctly the mistake with the Octos, so all of his RPs are being built. That's not going to be a big deal. Well, Vermind, his Shinveer and Tethveer are coming in, but they have just missed the Triad. This is The Triad move order has not propagated at this point in time yet, so Vermind doesn't realize what's going on. He is, at the same time, setting up his expansion. He has five more LC and four more QP in his expansion, his natural expansion, towards the outside of his base. So Nail will be going for the corner expansion. It looks like he is propagating on his time wave, so the green time wave will carry it forward. But we are seeing that he does have his units in here, and he is starting to propagate. The Veers are about 20 seconds away from the looks of it, so they will be hitting it, but it will be able to, there will be three or four RPs before the Veers actually come in and start to attack. We'll see how Nail deals with this. I'm sure he's probably figured that Vermine's going for this exact strategy. And we see the green time wave is coming in, and on the green time wave, Nail is definitely aware of the Veers attacking his Seppi and Faro. He hasn't got to address it yet, but it looks like he is right now. He does see what's going on, he's double checking, sees that there are Veers coming in, jumps back toward closer to the past, and see if he's doing anything around the map. No, nothing's to be done around the map. He does have Octos coming in. My guess is he might be thinking of going for Octopods. He does have this RP set up, it looks like that was probably meant to be set up earlier. If he gets one RP cycle, he can build an Octopod. That one RP cycle of QP that is, you build an Octopod has 40 QP, 50 QP now! He does have enough QP for an Octopod, and I'm guessing he's going to be building that in order to fend off the... No, he's building more Octos. Looks like this is an Octo just for defense. I'm a bit surprised, I thought he would go, he would go for an Octopod to get rid of the infantry. It, the current Octopods, of course, have the... Oh, never mind, there we are. I was exactly right, he's going for an Octopod. He's going to fast forward a bit to get through this. So he's going for an Octopod for defense, but it's going to be up once the Veers come in, so it'll take a little while to actually start attacking. They're attacking the Seppi. The Seppi is not going to be taking too much damage in the meantime. The Octo has not helped support yet, but the Octopod has come in, killed off the Teth Veer. The Shin Veer was damaged a bit, but it isn't as heavily damaged, and of course the Shin Veer is a generalist unit. It's more powerful against ground than the Teth Veer is. And it looks like Vermind... Well, I'm not sure if Vermind's actually planning on making this a permanent scout. Jumping back towards the Unplayable Pass, I think he is... No, it looks like he's not playing... No, he is playing Echoing It Out. Just gonna say. It looks like he's not playing Echoing It Out. This doesn't make any sense. Of course he's playing Echoing It Out. He is setting up a Teth Veer, a Calm Hub, right near this ramp, and he seems to have not been able to do that. He didn't have enough resources at the time. Rather unfortunate, because it'd be kind of useful to have that Calm Hub there, though, frankly, I think it'd be more useful around here-ish. 
So anyway, Vermind is definitely echoing out this attack as expected, because there's really no reason to keep it there. It's a suicide attack. And Nail, having deflected that attack, now moving forward, sees sees the Zion Veer actually coming in. Four more expansions. The Natural has been expanded to, the main base has been expanded to. No new foundations, however. Vermind has not actually built any foundations other than his starting annex. He is upgrading auto defense, but like I said, he has not built any other foundations. He doesn't have... Let's see. Back when Nail is, he has plenty of resources to do so. So if he jumped forward from the unplayable past, he'd be able to... To build more foundations, build a depot. I'm just surprised he hasn't built anything yet. And his expansion is being heavily attacked near the present. He's well aware of this. He knows what Nail is up to. He knows that Nail is going for a counterattack while also building up more forces of his own, probably just to expand. But he's definitely being a threat. So Vermine's gonna have to deal with this once he gets up to it. He does have more. He has a foundation coming up, depot coming up, and probably an aerial control center from this foundation, or he'll build another foundation here to build an aerial control center if he plans to in the first place. Octobot, the Comp Hub has managed to be built though this time around, but I don't see it being useful. The Octobots had already come in and the Comp Hub is not going to defend very well against it. So jumping back to when Vermind is, the 247 mark, we see that the the Veers are moving away. They're completely avoiding the north base right now. Really there's no point. Nail is going to be destroying anything that's around there. And Nail back to the 347 mark. He does see the Comp Hub, which is echoed out by the way. This Comp Hub will not actually exist. So getting distracted in that one iteration is not going to make a huge difference. The second forward, the green time wave. So, Vermind does see Nail attack his base pretty heavily, and Nail hasn't actually touched this part of the timeline much yet. But, Vermind is much more focused on the near unplayable pass section where he will be upgrading. Well, he's upgraded auto defense. He's getting a depot. He will be getting some units soon. I'm not sure exactly what, though. He has enough resources to pretty much get anything right now. But I wouldn't be surprised if he went for Zion Turchers. Just because they are cloaked, there's no Faros along with the group, so it'd be pretty easy to grab some advantage against this. And here we are, the Octos are starting to expand RPs towards the north base. There are Faros coming over, so the timing for a Zion Church will be very tight and actually being able to get something done. So it looks like there isn't much room for Vermind to actually start building stuff. He does have, however, a Zion Church, a Zion Pulsar, sorry, two Zion Churchers and a Zion Pulsar coming out. And the Aerial Control Center where I thought it would be. So he does have a lot of he does not have a lot of CE though. And Zion Pulse are out, Zion Churches are out as well. Zion Churches don't appear to be cloaked though, they are going in uncloaked. No, they're cloaked. Okay, good. They are going to be cloaking and they are attacking the Seppi, getting rid of the Seppi, moving up towards the Octopod. The Octopod's still attacking the RPs quite heavily. Vermind now moving in with Zion Churches and Zion Pulsar. The Octopod will start attacking the Zion Pulsar. So Zion Churches is the one that's going to be actually dealing the damage. One Octopod is going down, the other Octopod is going to be going down very shortly after. And Nail has jumped back towards the 455 mark. He's moved a bit closer to the base, trying to harass more RPs when he can, but Design Churches and Pulsar have already come out. But if Faro is coming in, this is where it's going to be really problematic. Vermine's going to have to deal with this. I don't know if he's actually aware of that Octopod coming in. Sorry, but the Faro coming in, that, that will be messing with him a bit. And thankfully for him, he managed to kill the Faro fast enough. The Faro did not actually impact the battle very much at all. So Nail is running away. He's running his Octopod and the rest of his army is away, he will not be destroyed, but Vermine has also managed to successfully defend his natural expansion, moving towards the present he's getting Teth Pulsers and Zion Pulsers, and going for a counterattack of his own once again, his Zion Turchers and Shin Turcher are now going towards the expansion towards the north, there was an RP there from Nail. Nail, on the other hand, is getting a ton of Seppies, some Faros, and more Octopods. He has not gone for Spire, he has not gone for Advanced Structures yet, and Vermine... He, oh no, Nail does have advanced structures in the past. He doesn't have advanced structures at about the 8 minute mark when Vermind was, but at the 6 minute mark or so, he does have it. So he is likely to build a spire somewhere around here, but he hasn't done so yet. And he's also attacking from the side expansion here. The Octopod's coming in from the bottom, attacking from below the hill, destroying one of the RPs and the QP RPs. Vermind's gonna have a really hard time dealing with this. He's mostly focused on his macro game right now and his counterattacks, getting his expansion up as well. This shouldn't be too causally dependent on what he is on what's going on with Nail right now, but he should still be worrying about it. So the best for him will not actually be that great. The Seppies are still attacking the Shin Turcher quite heavily. Vermont's gonna have to deal with, of course, everything coming into his main base right now at the 707 mark. The Octopods, having destroyed one of the RPs, haven't really gone around yet. They are starting to expand. No, Design Veer is starting to expand towards this base right here. But the Octopods, of course, still 
going towards an attack, and the Octo is protecting against Design Veer. Octo and Fire are protecting against Design Veer. We'll be destroying it quite shortly. So Vermine's expansion attempt towards the south will not work, but it doesn't matter. He does have four bases already. Now, all he needs to do is convert that into units, which I'm sure he'll be doing very shortly. I'm a bit surprised that Auto Defense didn't ultimately get researched, though. He did have it before. Four Zion Bolters coming in. If they can get a good position on it, they will be able to at least get somewhere to attack the Octopods. If they can attack from a far enough away range, the Octopods don't have sk they don't have spotters. So the Zion Pulsers can get spotters and the Octopods don't have them. The Zion Pulsers will be able to outrange them and let's destroy them. At this point, though, Nail is going to be only having to fight a Shin Turcher and two Zion Turchers, both of which are probably low. No, they still have a fairly decent amount of time for cloaking. The Zion Pulsers are not really close enough to deal with Huge amount of damage. One of them is ultimately moving closer. Vermine is setting it closer, but not close enough. The Zion Churches are really dealing the bulk of the damage. More Tide Pulses coming in as well. And really, Nail, I don't think he's going for air units right now. He probably will be ultimately, but he isn't right now. I don't see anything around here going for air units. Another duo being built towards his expansion, towards his south of his main. And of course, the expansion, the main expansion towards the northeast. He already has that well taken. So right now, Vermite has once again successfully defended his main base, doing a very good job defending against Nail's attacks. Nail's doing a very good job getting nice attacks, diversion attacks around the map, but he did lose his Octopods that time, that was a bit of a mistake, which means that Vermite now has a small advantage in army. No, not small, sorry, he built much design pulses and they're actually well alive. So Vermite has a decent advantage in army, but he will have to push through Nail, and Nail, of course, does have a ton more ton of resources. Vermite's been spending a lot of his money, Nail hasn't actually been spending as much of his money at this point in time. Let's double check if he has macro in the present. He appears to have gotten some more units closer to the present, and that is good, but he's going to need to use a bit more. That's fine, though. He he does macro, He has been macroing in the present, so that's... And Vermind as well. Both players have been going towards the present to macro a bit more, which is good to see. And Vermind also, he has gotten Gate Tech. He is getting Hawking Blast as well, getting a bunch of Ted Pulse, Ted Searchers, Shin Searchers, just building up quite a bit of an army, using the resources he has. Very well done. Nail, on the other hand, focus more on the past. I'm guessing he's going to go for... Here we are, Octopod attack. Octopod attack towards the north base. Really should be... I don't know if he's aware of the other bases that Vermind has at the moment, or that Vermind is completely massing up at the south base. If he was, I'm sure he'd be attacking those. And Vermind, now focused at this point in time, has a has quite a large army, really. Managed to macro it up, and still, he has gate tech. It's really set up. He We need to be undermined in the unplayable pass in order to actually lose it. So that's a good position to be in. Vermind now moving out at the 938 mark towards Nail's base. He is trying to attack the third, the southeast third. He sees nothing there. We'll be seeing nothing there very shortly. And from there, it looks like he is going to go north. He's going to go north, attack the expansion that Nail was just pushing to right now. And for Nail, he does have a Spire. He does have a Farbots coming in at the 1016 mark. First Farbot coming in. And the Octopods are attacking the Natural as well. But that has been mostly mined out. So both players attacking the Naturals in their base. But right now, Nail is... Wow, Nail is taking heavy damage in his main. Not a huge loss, though. The real loss will be in the northeast base right now. The Arcticus has been destroyed, however, so Nail does not have, from the 1025 mark, he does not have a command structure. He does, he has lost it when he is focused. So these units will attack, yeah, these units will attack the main base if they've been, no, they wouldn't be cute to do so. They will attack the natural, they won't attack the main base unless Nail goes and selects them all. He does have the orders to do it, though. 13 orders is more than enough, but of course his main base is getting heavily attacked. So Vermont's done an excellent job of fending off attacks and building up a massive force, so this is very interestingly done. Of course, he, yeah, Nail did not macro as well as he could have. He is over pushing towards the present and macroing up, getting a few Sepi Legos up. You can get a few more of those, get about nine of those. I think that'll be more than enough to deal with what, well, let's see, he has, you now mostly Zion Pulsers. He's got the Zion Church, which can't attack here. He's got the Tet Turchers here and Tet Pulsers down there. Yeah, it looks like it would actually be the best option. Sepi Legos are probably the way to go, so Nail should be pushing towards that. He has tons of money in the bank. Getting another Arcticus at the 1226 mark, so he will be able to at least command his units. And like I said, he has plenty of Chrono Energy at this point. Getting Chrono Porting for himself. Vermind focused on getting more and more RPs. And he himself has, as he's getting low on power, he seems to have not had... Oh, here, I'm thinking, he seems to have not had the foundations. No, he doesn't actually. He didn't build the foundations, oddly enough. But further in the past, he does have them, so it should be fine nonetheless. And he is now attacking for the Unplayable Pass. He is attacking the main base. The Sepi Legos are doing a valiant job defending, taking out most of the air units, taking out the Shin Pulsers. And Shin, well, Shin Pulsers are actually dead. Shin Turcher. Shin Turcher is going down quite quickly, but they are still heavily damaging the base. So even though the Sepi Legos are there, there's not enough to kill them in time. 
The forces of Vermine are just coming in way too fast, way too strong, destroying the entire base, so even if they even if Nail defense is totally Pyrrhic victory, Nail has jumped back towards the 11.30 mark when the attack started. Trying to position himself in a good spot, but still, this is a very hard space to be in. The best you can do right now is defend against this, move one of the Tentaligos out, and split down, but even then, there seems to be too many units coming in. Vermine just managed to overwhelm Nail with sheer numbers. Whether or not there's any balance issue, I don't know with, from this game, but definitely managed to overwhelm with sheer numbers. And Nail, on the other hand, has moved back from attack in the main base, oddly enough. I, he does have current boarding, though. He may be planning on going for an uppercut move to try to completely disable his attack, but I don't know if he is doing that. He does have his Archpods right here. They are connected to an Archkiss. And Teth Hawkins, Zion Hawkins are coming towards the north, towards Vermine's natural. Vermine, of course, still attacking the main base at that 1241 mark. And Vermine has not decided to attack the natural yet, or to assault the natural to save it. While there is a reef coming up right next to Vermine's base, Vermine is aware of that and will start attacking it. Just automatically, Teth Hawkins had already moved there. So that reef is not doing too well. I doubt it's going to actually be set up permanently. The Sepi Ligo doing a very valiant job defending, actually doing a very good job defending too, of course, being that most of the units alive are still are just Zion Pulsers, but between Teth Pulser and Shin Churcher is destroyed, so Nail has surrendered. That is the game. Nicely done by Vermind at just getting enough units with Vekir to survive, just and also very well done defending, really. So I think the only thing Nail could have done at that point, best thing Nail could have done would have been to macro a bit more. Maybe get a second try or get get another, get another expansion, really secure that north expansion and build up a larger army, because Nail had tons of money in the bank. But he didn't macro enough. He did macro a bit earlier on, but it was in the later game that was a bit of a problem. Of course, see, the Oddfods are doing quite a number on the forces coming in to try to assault them, so the Oddfods are certainly quite powerful. The air units were not quite as powerful as expected, I'm sure. So Nail has just lost... he's losing the Oddfod army now, but it's quite interesting to see how much damage they're still able to deal in his dying breath. And here comes the Zion Hawkins and Teth to finish it off, and that will be it. So that was... that was the game. Nail has surrendered, and it was a pretty good game. So I don't think I'm going to be playing another one, but... Well, let's see, Vermind has quit out. So he's quit Akron. I'm not sure if they're going to be playing another... Then Nail wants to play again. Not sure if Vermind's going to agree to that. It'll be interesting to see what happens, but... Let's see. Of course, Vicarin, having watched it, was not surprised about what happened during the game. So, Nails, I'm not sure if he's going to be watching a replay right now or not. If he is, that's then we're just going to close this down. But if he's going to go to playing, then that will be quite interesting. Because I, because he mentions Cron Aberrant doing something different with his octo, octopods, setting up a really powerful assault. As we saw that game, the last time I casted, where Cron Aberrant was attacking with Grekum with a, about a dozen octopods against Nail Ciso. It wasn't super effective, but it still was rather effective in getting rid of a ton of expansions. Really, I think Nail just... Yeah, Nail really didn't push the macro enough. That's the only thing. He, he didn't push it. He didn't get what he could have with the money he had. And he had tons of money. Okay, so Nail is checking the replay. Though he might be checking it at five times speed, so... That could still be feasible. Anyway, so it looks like with the changes, the Octopod change is the big one that makes Vekir nervous. The air changes, well, there aren't really any air changes, they're anti-air changes, but Nail didn't build any Octoligos, he didn't build a lot of Seppies, so, I mean, he built about half a dozen Seppies, but not a huge amount. And, of course, the te Zion Turchers were able to get rid of the Octopods because there weren't enough Octos supporting them. Like, probably three or four Octos would give the, oh, sorry, three or four Faros, not Octos. Three or four Faros would give the Octopods enough time to to destroy the Zion Turchers. We'd have to test for sure, but I think probably three or four would do it, just in terms of buying time. All you need is to have one of the Faros alive long enough, like at least one Faro alive long enough, to spot for the Zion Turchers while the Octopods are slaughtering them. Once that happens, if the Octopods manage to deal enough damage, then you're set. It's just a matter of making sure that they're actually able to deal enough damage, because if they're not, well, it's kind of difficult. You need to have the Faros detecting, you need the Octopods dealing damage. Cool. 
Of course, another option is just to put the Faros behind the Octopods that are acting as meat shields. So the Octopods are acting as meat shields for the Faros. Though that may be counterproductive since you are trying to use the damage unit as a meat shield, which... That's... It's kind of debatable. Maybe two in front, two behind. And two Faros in front of the Octopods, two behind the Octopods. That would at least allow for some more flexibility. So the uh, Octopods wouldn't be taking the brunt of the damage, but they also wouldn't be slaughtered. And Vigory is pointing out the Octopods have low sight range, but Zion Turtles also don't have super high sight range or attack range either. So it's not a huge deal. The big question is making sure that the Zion Turtles are detected when they're in when the Octopods are inside Zion Turtle range. Though admittedly it would be handy to have the Faros far enough ahead so that the Zion Turtles are detected when they're in Octopod range, which is currently, which in the mod is 28. We could have two behind and two in front. This is Vikrin's pointing out having, can't really have Faros behind. You could have two in front and two behind, so the two in front are able to detect in advance, and the two behind are there just in case the two in front die, so you still have some detection. And Nail, oh that's odd, I wonder why it's, anyway. Nail realizes that the Octopod, see it didn't get it, or Carnabra didn't get it until 3 minute 47 mark, which is kind of late, really. Hmm, odd. Anyway, yeah, there's, see yeah, I didn't get the first Octopod until 3.47, and, oh, okay, no, it was on hills. So yeah, on the same map, he didn't get the Octopod until fairly late, which is interesting, but not totally surprising. But then again, Nail was also trying to defend against the Veers coming in, which... I mean, one... I mean, that was not a bad defense, really. That was fine. It was just that I think he allowed... He did get... He did run away. Vermine did have... Did continue to attack. So he did kind of allow Vermine some extra room to rebuild and get going and just steamroll him. So that's probably what happened more than anything. Anyway, Vermont is waiting for him, and then once he gets in, we'll be able to start the game. Not sure when he's planning on coming, but... Should be pretty soon. Okay. Okay, well, and also Vermind is going to record it for himself. I suppose in case there's any issues with replays, we can just double check and use that as a way of seeing what happened. So we have two perspectives in the recording. That, that'll be interesting. I'm not sure if Vermind's going to cast it. I kind of doubt it, but anyway, still nice to have more people recording the games. It's kind of nice to see. A little bit uh, redundant. Uh, very much a matter of hearing that you liked recording so I made a recording inside your recording so you could watch while you're watching anyway once he gets this set up he will be coming in and we should be able to start once again on hills so expect a fairly quick game but hills can last a little while okay now pointing out that on the pre-game chat that Cronamer did more economic build which would make sense why he'd be able to get base class units so fast Okay, Vermind has started up Akron, we'll be joining up quite shortly, and then we will start. Okay, let us begin. Right, once Vermind's ready. Okay, Vermind exchanging standard pleasantries and courtesies, and now we begin. Once again on hills. Nail has joined, and Vermine should be joining pretty soon as well.
There we go. Vermind has joined. So the game has started. Nail's in the top right corner. Vermind's in the bottom left corner. Like before, Vermind is playing Vekir, and Nail will likely be going for Grekim. Nail's still paused at the very start, though. He will... Let's see, he's getting Grekim, probably just setting up his perfect start, which is fairly standard. Although, to be honest, for Grekim, the main part of it is making sure your RPs go in front of the boxes and don't fly around at all. You can't actually build the RPs that early because you need Faro being progenerated. So... It's not the same as other races where you have to queue up the entire RP stack. It's... or RP queue, rather, not only really stack. It's different. It's more... Oh, interesting. He's saying his Arctic is towards the little ramp with the infantry-only path. I guess he's planning on just keeping it out of the way entirely. Interesting plan. I'm... it looks like he's probably banking on moving... either moving these two so that the Arctic doesn't have to tank, or... Well, I don't know what. Maybe getting an early defense. That's all that really comes to mind, because generally the Arcticus is used to tank for the Triad so that you can't easily rush it and destroy it. And as we see the two Veers from the Shinveer... No, wait, is it? Yeah, it's the Tethveer and the Shinveer. They are coming in, Zynveer going towards the expansion, Shinveer and Tethveer going towards the main base of Nail. And Nail setting up his early expansion, getting messed up with the Octo pathing. Oh, boy. The Octos are getting a bit confused as to where to go. Dancing around. Uh, Octos are having a nice little... Octos are having a pleasant social. I don't think this is quite what Nail had intended, but it... It, it must be fun for the Octos, I would think. You know, dancing around. Just, just dancing, you know. Okay, Nail has put a stop to that and gotten them back to work. So the Octos are now building RPs as expected, and the Arcticus has landed. It will be in a really nice secure spot, so it's very difficult to harass for Vermind. And Vermind now building up his expansion up at the one minute mark. Vermind has actually jumped forward to the 248 mark. Oh, I should jump back a bit. His veers seem to have come in at the two minute mark. Sorry, 220 mark, actually. So about two, two minutes, sorry, two minutes, 30 seconds in the game. The veers will come in, see that there's no Arcticus there, and that the Octos are having a little social, which has been echoed out. But the. Ooh, boy, that's a lot of RPs. Let's see, 6LC and 4QP, along with 6LC in the main base. Vermine definitely going for heavy expansion build. Zynveer trying to set up another expansion, and... Shinveer, Tethveer getting attacked by Octos, so it's, this looks like what Nail was planning on doing, just using a couple Octos to defend. Back at the 3-minute mark, he... No, sorry, 2-minute mark. He does have a Sepi and a Faro coming up, which will probably be used to expand pretty shortly. Just jumping back to make sure he has got that right. And his reef is being set up right next to his main base. He's not moving his triad at all. And the viewers are coming in now once again, so Vermind will have an even better idea of what Nail is doing. And Vermind has gotten... Hmm, Vermind has gotten a, another Zion beer from the looks of it. He's getting another Zion beer for expansion. And he is going to be... Well, he's going to be seeing that his troops aren't doing too well inside the main base, but also... I should jump back at this point in time, at the 157 mark. He has stopped his forces, moving towards the natural rather than moving towards the main base. Changing around their entire direction, and my guess is Nail is going for a Reef, and they'll be going for a Spire from the Faro. I know, getting more Faro's coming up, actually, because the Shinveer... Alright, this is the attack... Sorry. Vermine's attack change has not propagated yet, so he's actually attacking from the south rather than attacking from the west. And tries moved forward, interestingly enough. Or not triads, sorry, the triads still here. The Faros were moved forward to help attack and defend from the west side. We have Sepi Progen, Faro Progen, and Octo in Progen mode. So full triad being built, advanced structures being built, the two, well, be done about 3 minutes, 10 seconds into the game. And then you have Faros for Spires and everything. So it looks like Nail is probably going for fast air, and Vermind, on the other hand, is... Hmm, he's, he's redoing a lot of his orders near the past. It seems to be just... Double checking where to scout and figure out, make sure he's got the scouting going right. Double checking the back as well, make sure there's nothing going on here. So he's making absolutely sure Nail is doing anything tricky at any point in time. But surprisingly enough, going completely for RPs, still not build a foundation, no depots or anything. Going straight for RPs and not much else. Getting computer pieces in his main base and his Shinveer and Tethveer just outside of Nail's base right now, so. Vermine's definitely stopped this, he doesn't want this to go, doesn't want this attack to happen. And Nail is also going towards the unplayable past, making sure that Vermine didn't do anything tricky near the unplayable past. And he didn't, he's just moving around and scouting. 
And now sending out his two Faros and an Octo. Not really sending any Octopods yet. And here's Advanced Structures is complete. And Aspire being built by one of the Faros that was being sent out. Hmm. Probably was from the Arcticus Dispatch. Although, then again, this is the only Faro really available. There's only that Faro and the other one that's going after the attack. So, Aspire being built fairly early on. This is more like the standard Grecon build. So Nail trying to fall back to standard Grecon strategies, not going for so much for Octopods, and foundations have been built for Vermind at the 4 minute mark, so he will have foundations to build up with. And he is getting a depot at 437, a depot on ACC. So he will have vehicles coming in after about 5 minutes into the game. Well, vehicles coming in, and Gate Tech, so definitely Chrono Rush going on, oh, not only Chrono Rush going on, but Chrono Port focused build going on. Getting Gate Tech early on, maybe a maybe a skip build. It's very possible a lot of players do get Gate Tech just for skipping, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was Chrono Port related because Chrono Portation from Vecchio can be very powerful and very scary when done right, and it's not uncommon for Vecchio players to go for that. So, hmm. Anyway, Vermind is continuing to build up. There is the Foundation stop four. He is jumped towards the past. He has. His, hmm. He has his Shinveer and Tethveer over here, double checking to make sure nothing goes on. While his main base is being, or like, his main natural is being attacked. And he does have a Zyneveer going towards the third. So he's more focused on building up RPs than he is on actually defending anything right now. And Faro's coming in, Seppi's coming in, nothing really major has come up yet. An Octopod, first Octopod at the 443 mark. And no far or Seppi I'm not sure why he built the Spire then. He does have enough money to buy some air units, but he hasn't actually started to build them. And I tried towards the expansion as well, so Nail is getting his expansion built up. I'm a little bit surprised Vermin has I'm a little tiny bit surprised Vermin has built the other foundations. Not a huge surprise, but I wouldn't be surprised if he built a foundation here with an annex to get another design here towards that base. Start expanding there. Anyway, both players have jumped back towards 430, 438, and they are. Shinbeer and Tethbeer are up here. They're seeing the Seppis come in to attack the main base, and they're trying to destroy them. They are attacking them. We'll be dealing probably enough damage to kill them. And a comma hub has been built near the north base, so Vermind will see all but one crate that Nail could expand to, and the Nail is likely to expand to. Nail at this point has not built up any air units. He continued to build. This is the still building with the expansion. Nothing changed there. And Vermind is. Because apparently there's a minor pathfinding error. I thought I'd fix them all on this map, but I guess this is a rather iffy map, so I'm not totally surprised. Anyway, I will look into it afterwards, but in the meantime, we have another foundation coming up from Vermine. Vermine has not he's built Zion Churchers and Zion Pulsar, but five minutes four seconds into the game, and it's two Shin Churchers as well. So building up quite a lot of vehicles, six minutes into the game, but still has the vehicles. And Gate Tech has not ultimately been researched. That has apparently been undermined. He did not ultimately research it. Ran out of money, apparently. So, he does not have Gate Tech. He won't be able to skip teleport these units immediately out of the factory. Which is kind of unfortunate, because it'd be handy for defense, but not super useful. I mean, he's still able to kill the Octo in time. The Octopod is here. The Octopod in the main base, Octopod in the natural. And a Farbod has finally been built up. It is turning into a, another triad, so it's going to be Sepi Ligos coming in. Right now, probably. And here comes the Legal Class in order for actually allowing the Sepi Legos. So now the Sepi Legos will happen once the Legal Class is done. Of course, you kind of need the research. And now Legal Class is done, so Sepi Legos will be up shortly. I'm sure Nail is building that. So Nail's main base has also been completely mined out for LC. QP is half, well, more than half mined out. And Zion Church is coming in from the back. They do have skip teleport. They Oh, Gate Tech has apparently been finished now. So, Furmine has managed to finish Gate Tech. Double check on the green time up. Yep, Gate Tech is finished. So, Design Churches are coming from the back, are attacking the, the two PRPs, and that's actually going to be meaningful. There isn't a whole lot of QP for Nail right now. He does have four two PRPs in the expansion, however. And Vermine still expanding heavily around the map. Shin Churches have destroyed the Seppis that were in the north, or attacked Seppis in the north. They actually forced the Seppis to retreat, so Nail has retreated those Seppis from that northwest expansion. Design Churches will probably pick them off as they go through, however, which could slow down the attack on the expansion, or attack on the main, ultimately. Nope, they're just moving past, they aren't even attacking the Seppis, they're just moving. They're moving right along. Faro coming back to try to detect them, but may not be enough. They are going to teleport in pretty soon, and 
Vermine jumping back, he will be getting... Let's see, he's getting more vehicles? No, not getting more vehicles, but he is getting more RPs from the looks of it. He is getting Zion Pulsar towards the main base as well. Especially as Shin Turtress hasn't moved forward. And Zion Turtress attacking the Faro that was sent to detect it. The other Zion Turtress still raiding. No Faro's near the Octopods, however. Nail has not sent any Faro's yet, but he is jumping back. Probably will move a Faro to help out. Four Sepulchre was being built up in the meantime, and Vermine does not have any Teth Pulsars or Teth Halkians. He didn't have Health 10 class if he wanted to. Building up a Slipgate in his main base, in a very vulnerable position, mind you. He could easily be attacked. He probably should have built it about here or so. But choosing to build it in front of his base will be tanking any damage that comes in, which may be a problem, especially as the Sepulchre are probably going to be attacking now, if not sooner. So that is going to be... a bit of a problem. A reef being built, a tri being built towards the north expansion. Zion Pulsar has been already positioned here to attack this if it comes in, but here it comes. Okay, the Zion Pulsar is going to attack this. Nocto coming in to destroy it will probably be able to kill it. No, not quite. And has Nail aborted? No, Nail has not aborted this. It just hasn't propagated yet. So it's hard to tell what will happen. Nail jumped away, so we did not see the final result of that battle. Shin Turtles are going to be going towards the center of the map. Here we are. Going towards the expansion, ultimately. Natural expansion off squad being heavily damaged while the main base is still being harassed by the Zion Turcher. And here we go. The City League was are coming towards the north base. They have destroyed the they have destroyed the Zion Pulsar. One of them is attacking the Calm Hub, so that has been successfully defended against, so Vermind has done successful defense. He is looking at the playable pass, probably trying to figure out any attack. No! Not attack vector so much as just chronoports. He is definitely going for chronoported. Chronoported Shin Turcher. However, some Seppies are there to help defend against this. Not quite enough though, but there is enough. There was enough ultimately for that Shin Turcher to go down. So it didn't do enough damage to really be meaningful. Even really as support, ultimately the Assembly Legos come in and will destroy it. So the Assembly Legos doing an excellent job defending the base for Nail. So Nail just needs to keep this up, keep macroing up, keep getting more. Well, more Assembly Legos ultimately, but more of everything really. And now it looks like Ver Vermine is going for the Southeast expansion, he's going for the South expansion as well. Vermine is definitely expanding around the map very aggressively. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't gone for Halkin class or any Teth units right now. He really needs to do that. And here we are, sending back five Shin Turchers this time around. Not sure if he's gonna be if anything's gonna actually happen with him yet, but he is sending back five Shin Turchers. Only one of them going towards the attack that ultimately happened, but the other five. Here we go, okay, they are definitely going for an attack. Are they? Yes, they are. Definitely they are going for an attack. Helping out their, or at least helping out their fellow Shin Turcher. No, they're just helping out the fellow Shin Turcher, not actually going directly for an attack. And that was kind of odd. I'm not sure if he was planning a defense or if he just messed up a bit on. I think he just messed up a bit in the uppercut of queuing. Because that is kind of unusual. Anyway, Nail did jump towards the present a bit. He is. Let's see, is he getting more stuff here? No, he's not appear to be macroing up any more up here. He does have not a lot of resources, actually. And Vermine in the present has a ton of resources. Vermine's also focused heavily on the past, near the unplay or inside the unplayable past. Probably going for a proper uppercut this time, though I don't see any movement going on, so it doesn't appear to have actually changed anything. Anyway, Vermine does still have a lot of Shinturchers. I'm surprised he hasn't gone for more. But Nail appears to be or going to the present. I'm not sure if he's macroing in the present or just going towards the present in order to see what's happening. He is starting to run out of RPs, though. He's running out of running out of resources. He's lost a lot of resource income. He doesn't have the north base. He never built any RPs there. Jumping towards the 11 minute mark. Vermind is also not building a whole lot of units. He got a Shin Halkin coming up. Needs a ton of Teth Halkins. Needs probably about half a dozen Teth Halkins. Getting a foundation toward from one of the destroyed Shin Turtle or sorry, Shin Turtle attack came in towards the north base. And Okay, let's see here. Sorry, I'm just gonna double check when the Shinturch attack came in. Okay, so Shinturch attack came in after Seven Legos got chronoported back, and let's see, the Seven Legos would have gotten chronoported back. Hmm, interesting. So, Nail did chronoport back some Seven Legos. The parents of the Seven Legos were destroyed by. No, they ended up destroying the Shinturch. So, Nail, through some re chronoports, managed to destroy the Seven Legos. Sorry, destroy the Shinturch before they killed the Seven Legos, stopping that foundation that is being built. One from Vermine's point of view, so Nail has managed to uppercut away that foundation from Sepi Ligo Chronoports. My guess is he's probably trying to permaclone the Sepi Ligos, not just Chronoport them, but actually exploit a small, exploit something small in the time way the timeline mechanics work. Where if anything falls off the edge of the timeline, 
if there's a say chronoport arrival falls off the edge of the timeline and then the chronoport departure is cancelled, it's cons it becomes permanent. But you have to actually re chronoport to do that, and it's the timing is a little bit technical to get right. But I think Nail is going for that. He was trying to work out the calculations for that earlier. And I'm still surprised Vermind is not going for Teth Hawkins. Really, that'd be the best choice at this point. The way the balance mod is set up, Teth Hawkins are meant to be able to counter large amounts of air. Although it's not a large amount of air yet, it probably will be very soon. At any rate, he isn't going for Teth units at all, in any capacity, whether it's Pulsars, Hawkins, or Churchers, or even Veers, but Veers wouldn't be particularly useful. But yeah, he's going for in any capacity. RPs are being sent towards the North Base from Vermind. Nail acting more towards the playable past. He is actually expanding towards that base near to the near to the present. But of course Vermind will have already destroyed the entire production capacity before that happens. So I'm guessing these Seti Legos will be sent over to deal with the issue. And it looks like no, Octopods are coming in to deal with the issue or ultimately coming to deal with the issue. Seti Legos are coming in and I'm guessing a front report will be occurring to help protect against this. But we will see quite shortly. It looks like Nail has Cornport back to Seppi Legos. He's definitely Cornporting them back to attack this, but it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be in time unless the Octopods come back as well. He will not. He gets rid of the Calm Hub, but will not be able to get rid of anything else in time. So it looks like Nail is in a really bad spot right now. And actually, the Seppi Legos were. Oh, it looks like they got killed before they even managed to Cornport back. Yes, because these Seppi Legos would have been the parents of the Seppi Legos back here. So it would appear that the Cornports ultimately didn't happen, but. No! Sympathy was are going to try to destroy, try to undermine the Shin Hawkins, kill them before they manage to kill the, the pre chronoported versions of themselves. But ultimately, this doesn't happen, so Nail trying to create a paradox at least to get back to those Sepi Legos, but unfortunately fails to do so. So, just to recap, Sepi Legos tried to chronoport back. They end up chronoporting back to here, attacking this base, getting destroyed near to the present by the Shin Hawkins from Vermind, and the Red Time Wave carries this, so the Sepi Legos were ultimately killed. And as a result, we're not able to corner port back and protect the base. And it looks like, no, Nail has actually managed to try to do this a couple more times. He didn't, he didn't save his own base, at least not at this point. But he is still trying to corner port back the units to at least defend themselves. But it doesn't look like it's ultimately going to be as profitable as Nail would have liked. He does manage to keep one of the second Legos. Two more are coming from dead parents. So two, these two second Legos don't appear to be causally consistent. This one does. It does have the pre corner for that's still alive. Regardless, this base has already been taken over, or at least been destroyed. Vermine managed to destroy it. Here we are, here's the Teth Hawkins, though. Vermine building up Teth Hawkins, there should be enough, three should be enough for the amount of, for the amount of what he has. It, it shouldn't be a problem. And another corner departure, so Nail has corner port back these Seppi Legos, and they do have causally consistent parents, probably going for, or at least one of them does. He might still be going for the re corner port, though, because I don't think all of those parents are causally consistent. Check the red time wave though. This this is a causally consistent Seppi Ligo. But it it looks like it will chrono port back. But I don't know about the other ones on the blue time wave right now. They are probably going to be ultimately undone. That is a bit of a risky gambit. Because they they were heavily damaged and the chrono porting back will only just echo them out unless like I said, unless Nail is lucky and managed to re chrono port them to the point of perma cloning, but I don't imagine that will happen. Anyway, Ted Hawkins coming to attack the base, but Octopods, Octopods were chrono ported back to help defend against this. Chrono back to defend alongside themselves, and it looks like they will be able to do so. Let's see here, we had Nail coming in, stacking. He also did chrono port back the Octopods even further behind. So the Octopods being chrono ported back around the 14 minute mark, or 1420 mark, coming into existence. And the second thing is, this is when they were attacked up before. So the Octopus trying to destroy what they can at the base, but like I said, Nail still lost that expansion ultimately. So trying to do what he can to defend against it, and these Teth Hawkins are not in a good spot. They are pretty much doomed. This green time wave will carry the Octopods coming in. And no, but it looks like the Teth Hawkins do manage to get rid of the front Octopod, but the Octopods near the back have more ammo left, and we'll be able to deal. No, not enough damage. The Teth Hawkins actually. Look like they're in a pretty good position. One of them will survive. They aren't going to be able to kill the Octopods, but they're still able to damage them a fair amount. And survive. That's the important part. Vermine's still going heavily for the Shin Turchers. He's jumped closer to the present. He is... You see here. He's jumped closer to the present. He is attacking the southeast base. Turn back to the beginning of the battle here. 
Looks like he is attacking the southeast base. Gonna kill that last Sepi Ligo. And will be a nail in case you're wondering your Sepi Ligos were never there. They got killed before they could Chrono Fort, so they were ultimately echoes of themselves. So the Sepi Ligo getting killed, that's gonna be a bit of a hassle for nail. And right now we see that at the 1750 mark. Vermind is attacking the natural expansion of the Shin Turch or sorry, Shin Halkian. While Octopus do attack the South expansion, but Vermind has tons of money in the bank, way too much money in the bank for his own good. And that will be a big problem because that means Vermind I mean, he really could be pushing even more units than he is right now. Nail does not have as much money. He does still have quite a bit of money though. He can't easily macro with it, but I'm a bit surprised he hasn't. He has Corn Porter back the Farpod being used to progenerate to help defend, and it looks like it probably helped, but Vermind, of course, doing what he can, pushing back even further. More Sepi is coming in, though, and the Southeast expansion at the 1828 mark is being assaulted heavily, very directly, from the same Shin Halkin and Shin Turchers as before, but, of course, because of the same ones, they retreat at the same time, even though they don't need to retreat, the Sepi weren't there. So, Nail is now corner pointing back at Sepi to attack the South base, help damage it, not really a big deal, because like I said, Vermont has tons of money in the bank, not spending any or not spending anywhere near enough for any harassment to make a difference. And Vermind near the 928 mark is attacking Nail's base directly, destroying the Sepi Ligo. Possibly before Chronoports, but I'm not 100 percent sure. It looks like it might Yeah, it might actually be before Chronoports. So that that Sepi Ligo is also not causally consistent. So the Sepi Ligo attack in this base back here is not particularly secure in its own existence. This one right here, I mean. This one may not actually end up chronoporting back. I kind of doubt it. I think the chronoport departure got cancelled as the Sepi Ligo was destroyed. And now foundations keep going on. When the down Shin Turchers has a Shin Beer building a foundation, which is building a ton more foundations to help attack. And this will be probably the end of the game for Nail. I don't know what he can do right now to defend against this. He did have more Sepi Ligos coming in from the future. He had, a, he had some built here, but I don't think it's really going to make a difference. It looks like the rest time I was caught up and destroyed them, they are still going to be echoes of themselves. He may still be going for a re board Karma Clone, but I kind of doubt it. That is sort of his only hope right now. He does have an Octo and a Sepi, though. He could actually build up... He could rebuild a bit. And still, he has his other Arcticus near the... Slightly... Well, the infantry-only path down here, so it's hard to get to, but still. Vermind has managed to out Chrono board Nail at this point. But Nail still does have this production capacity down towards his natural expansion. I don't know if he's going to use it. But he does have it. He is focused on the 2024 mark, and he is actually coming forward a bit. No, he's not focused on this production yet. He, Vermont, on the other hand, still producing more, more and more vehicles, getting a ton of. Now, Ted Turchers and Shin Turchers, he has Shin Pulse. Bunch of Shin Pulsers out, actually. These are all Shin Pulsers in the air. You can almost never see Shin Pulsers. And more Shin Turchers and, and Ted Turchers being sent towards the north, and the main base actually is being given a bit of respite. Vermont is not attacking at the moment, oddly enough. Quite surprised he really could be. He might be planning a big chronoport back to just wipe Nail out, like wipe out the concept of Nail, but I think he's really just ended up giving Nail a bit of respite, which is what Nail needs. If he can use these two, well, it's Octo and Sebi, so he can build a Faro, but he can build a Faro, build up like an Octopod or something, from here he'd be able to actually rebuild from the Faro pod, get more Sepi Ligos. Though, with all the Tethalkins coming in, that may not be the best idea. And, oh, you know what? There are Veers, tons of Zion Veers coming in alongside the Sepi Ligos. Sorry, I launched on the Teth Halkian, I should say, not simply goes. And here comes the big Shin Pulsar, Shin Halkian, Teth Turcher mix. They're attacking the natural expansion, destroying, attacking the, the not the main, the third, the southeast third, destroying it. And now assaulting the main, playing the last assault of the game. So Vermine's gonna be dealing heavy damage to this, while Nail jumping back, actually dealing with the earlier foundation creep, which ultimately managed to pan out. And of course, there will still be more attacks. Simply they coming in towards the center of the Center of the map, trying to store it again. Vermin actually starting to run out of resources, but even they still have so many units, it doesn't really matter. And Nail's base being destroyed heavily. And once the screen time comes, we'll see that even more damage than the base is probably going to be completely gone by then. Yep. Base is completely gone. The support units that came in from Vermin weren't even necessary. And near the red time, we see that the Central Ligo is dealing a fair amount of damage, actually unimpeded, with the Far Pod as well. So the center expansion is being heavily damaged. But I don't see this being particularly problematic, given that Nail has lost his main base, he's lost his side base, he does have enough QP to chronoport a fair amount, and he may be planning on doing that. And yes, he is definitely chronoporting back one of the Sebi Ligos. 
Trying to chronicle on her back to deal even more damage, deal faster damage. Probably trying to choke out Vermont with the chance, and he does have Seppi Legos. And the thing with Lego class units is, of course, they can split down into base class units, which means they'd be able to actually deal with everything coming in. So, looks like Vermine was hanging out in the present a bit. Not, he was macroing up. He's definitely macroing up in the present, which is nice to see. And Nail chronoporting back even further. He does have a Seppi Lego. This is a Seppi Lego attack in that base. He's chronoporting back even further with a Seppi Lego to attack the natural in the center. But he is not going to be saving his main base. He does not seem to be keen on saving that main base. Incidentally, this Seppi Lego is currently causally consistent. So the main base being destroyed will not destroy it. And there goes that Seppi Lego that we saw in the unplayable past. Nail jumping forward towards the future, while Vermind is in the present, and oops, Vermind's in the present, he is macroing up even more. Or isn't yet, but he probably will be once the depot becomes free. Shin Hawkins being set up, and of course the main base, actually not main base, the main base of Nail has been completely taken over. There is a far pod, and the Sippy Vigo is apparently dead. Let me double check, it looks like the Sippy Vigo does end up getting killed earlier in the past. But I'm not sure how. Probably it didn't. It did get killed, but then managed to survive later on and propagated through. And a bunch of Teth Veers being built as well. So it looks like Vermine's going for a lot of Veer class units. I'm not sure he's planning on using them to to build up more vehicles really quickly, or if he's using them as just infantry support. Interesting. Very few people ever build Veer class units. Anyway, Vermine is chronoporting towards the past, and he will be getting more units built up. He does have. I see, he's chronoported a ton of units. He did have the slip get recharging. So you should double check, because that slip get recharges. Uh, these Shin Hakians would have been the ones chronoported back. So yeah, Shin Hakians got chronoported back and got sent towards the center of the map, which is not really useful because the Seppi Ligo is no longer there. It looks like the Seppi Ligo. See, the Ligo was attacking here, it was attacking here, and here we are. The Shin Pulsers end up killing off the Seppi Ligo. Shin Pulsers, the often never seen unit. Completely destroying some Seppi Ligos, although of course there's so many of them. And the Farpod being chronoported back towards this time as well. The Shin Pulsers making short work of it. It wasn't close at the time, so it really didn't help. And more chronoported back Teth Beers, interestingly enough. Though it's probably. No, this, those would have been bona fide Teth Beers, probably not Teth Hakians. So Vermine at this point pretty much has the game. Nail is trying his best to stay alive and keep himself out of trouble, just trying to build up, but he doesn't have a lot of units. He does have a Faro in his natural expansion. He could use to progenerate, build more units. He has tons of resources in the bank. Not sure. I don't think it's enough to actually beat out Vermine's production and Vermine's current army. The south base is still fairly healthy, though. He could probably use that. No, his... Never mind. His southeast base... Or, yeah, southeast natural. It's being heavily damaged. The tribe has been destroyed. Nail does not really have a chance to actually rebuild from here. He's pushed towards the present to actually try to deal with it, but no, he is he realizes it's probably GG, and it is actually GG. Nail has pretty much lost the game. I don't see any way out of it for him right now. His own his only hope has been destroyed. Vekir managing to teleport in and destroy everything. So Vermind, well done, second game. So that one was a lot closer, though I think Nail could have micro or could have macroed a bit better. He did do a better job than he did in the first game, though he did have a lot of money in the bank ultimately. So did Vermind, and Vermind was kind of seeing macroing in the present that he did. It would have been better to do it earlier, but, you know, I mean, it, it's still kind of tricky to do. So, yeah. It was kind of nice to see. Vermind did macro in or near the present. And Vermind <laughs> didn't know he could build so far to the east. What do you mean? There's the map edges here. It's, it's where, the, where it blocks off. That's the map edge. That's where it stops. No sooner. Yeah, so it's still kind of a nice back and forth game. It looks like Nail is trying to build some air units in the present. Ultimately, not going to be useful because the Red Time will destroy it. But I think Nail is trying to see if he can just do anything at all. Just possibly permaclone, possibly get around this permaclone, circle, and something. Anything to get himself out of this situation and stay alive. I don't see any way out of it, though. Once this Red Time Wave comes, he is going to have nothing. Ooh. It's gone all black. Anyway. Once this, yeah, this far pod is pretty much his only hope. If he can chronoport that back with an off, I think looks like he's trying to get an octopod far pod, build a Seppi Ligo. No, it's not. There's no time. Sorry, Neil. There is no time. That Seppi Ligo will not be up in time. It's gonna take another 20 seconds, and you only have five seconds of time left before like, five seconds of meta time left before that's done, and it's done. 
Yeah, there is nothing there anymore. So the Red Time Wave has completely wiped out Nail. So Nail, trying to see if there's anything in the unplayable pass that he has, and no, he does not. He is dead. Realize he's dead, he will be GGing, and that was an interesting game. I think I think Nail could have pulled it off if he had pushed a bit harder, more than three Sepi Ligos, pushed even more on the Sepi Ligo count. That would have really done it. But only the three Sepi Ligos wasn't enough. That's kind of unfortunate, but still, interesting to watch. And that's going to be it for tonight. i got to get to bed. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, everyone, and... Have a good night.